Hello and welcome to MMA Crypt Fighting Talk. Joining us today will be our regulars, Mr. Brian Hunt and Greg Marshall. Right, well, let's start the show and run one with a big discussion from this week's episode 12 of The Ultimate Fighter. No pun intended there with a big comment, Mr. Gutierrez. Now, for anyone who watched episode 12 of The Ultimate Fighter this week, will know exactly who I'm talking about. Anthony Gutierrez, he was set to face David Grant for a place in the men's bantamweight final. Anthony came in £4 over the bantamweight limit and was given one additional hour to lose the weight like normal. Uh, Anthony decided to forfeit the chance to fight in the semi-finals. He was citing he couldn't cut any more weight. What's your take on this, guys, and the amount of food that Anthony Gutierrez managed to shovel down his neck in the week leading up to the fight? Uh, let's go with you first, Greg. Uh, basically, the guys are full. Um, <laughs> he, he's had a chance to, to do something that many people want, and he's just threw it out the window without any effort. Um, the, obviously, the the guy who he was meant to fight in the previous round missed weight, and this guy, instead of taking a fight, took the easy route, because he wanted the easy route. He didn't want to cut weight again for the second time in a few days and fight again, so he took the took this, the, the quick way to the semi-final and uh, once he's there he decides not to bother making weight himself eating non-stop just crazy he's fucking scoffing money fuck me he's walking over his plate he's mayonnaise he's fucking dripping yeah. that mayonnaise on mayonnaise the is the you can have it was the boasting that he was going to make weight anyway I can eat what I want and I can make weight he had no intention of making weight see the thing about uh, weight cutting it's sucking the water out of you you can't suck fucking fat out of you like mayonnaise, it's nearly 100% fat. Whatever you're squirting there. So if you squirt fucking 100 grams on, that's 100 grams of fat going to your body. No amount of fucking sauna and sweat. You're not going to sweat that out. You know what I mean? That's, that takes, that's gradual. You know, he's going to fight in like a few days, crazy fucker. Uh, Brian, uh, what's your take on Gutierrez and uh, the weight cut? Uh, I think he got exactly what he, want, what he wanted out of tough, and that was airtime. I mean, that's he clearly doesn't want to be a professional fighter. He doesn't even approach that. So he, he got what he wanted, and uh, this is probably as much time as I'll spend speaking on the guy because he's not worthy of freaking being being spoken <laughs> of even even on our show. It's uh, he's yeah <laughs> he's he's a joke. So I'm, I'm Brian, done. What, Brian, what do you mean our <laughs> show? Our show's fucking top of the range, man. <laughs> top, top the, we're getting there. We're getting there. Uh, we've we've moved we've moved past this guy. That's what I'm trying to say. We're not yeah. we're not down in the depths of talking about this clown. So let's let's talk about professional fighters. Just one and more thing on him. Just one more thing on him. Did you know? <laughs> <laughs> we'll get Sorry, to guys. this thing. We'll get to this thing soon. Don't worry. Um, <laughs> do you know it's the cheeky fucker? He was actually commenting. Uh, when was the last time somebody missed weight? Oh, I think it was season five. Um, fucking Gabe Rudiger he was like sort of like mocking him like sat there with his butt in his hand it's like yeah you're next <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah okay uh, well Ronda was uh, crying to Dana saying it was her fault for not guiding Anthony uh, Ronda actually cut 17 pounds in one day apparently to show her team that it can be done through strength and will something that Anthony Gutierrez obviously didn't have uh, sounds like typical Ronda to me what's your take on Ronda cutting the weight guys you know she didn't have to do it do you think Ronda was showing off, or was Ronda being there for her team? Let's go with you first, Greg. I don't think she was showing off. It's just her her way of showing that she's got a winning mentality, and she's got the mindset of a champion, and uh, that that transfers off into them hopefully, and showing that this guy was just a loser, and she has what it takes, and that's what you need to have if you want to be successful. Hey uh, Brian, what's your take on Ronda cutting the weight? Um, well, I'm not a huge Ronda fan, but if you're on her team, I think she'd die for you. I mean, she's she's got that Diaz mentality of it that if uh, she, she's somebody I want to have my back, I and mean, she she's she's willed, strong willed, and I think she's good for her team. I don't care about all the other crap of people outside the the tough mug and the and that side of the Diaz crap. But no, I think she was being legit. She wasn't showing off. I think she will. She would have cut the weight with the guy to help him cut the weight. Okay, one pound each, one pound each. I think she's willing to do that for her team. So, no issues with it. Um, props to her, kind of shoving it down the guy's throat. Uh, she is a professional, and she's uh, she's good for the sport, and uh, no issues with it. 
Uh, it's nice to see her get some props, because obviously she took a bit of stick early on, you know. Well, we all read about the guy who died from cutting weight over in Brazil, um, and even to this day and age in MMA, there's still some who can outweigh their opponents by a good 10 to 15 pounds come fight night. Uh, do you think there should be restrictions on how much weight can be cut? Let's start with you first, Greg. Think, yes, I do think there should be something, but how they do it, I have no idea. Like, I, I've had this discussion elsewhere before, and I think there should be like a, a weigh-in on the seven days before the fight, and then a weigh-in the, the day before the fight, so you're, you can see that the guy's not cutting drastically within the seven days of the fight. But, again, oh, that would cost money and time and effort. It's a tough thing to regulate. Brian, what's your take on the restrictions? I don't know. It, it's a it's a tough one. It's I'm not worried about the guys in the UFC because they have plenty of doctors around them, and they've had fighters pulled from cutting weight because they've had issues. Nope, you're you're done. You can't cut any weight. Fights off. So it, it's the small orgs that don't have the doctors around them that aren't being tested beforehand. So those are the ones where it's an issue. Um, I always maybe thought 15, uh, sorry, 10% is allowed to be gained back. So 10% of the wider, of the fighters weigh in uh, could maybe the day bef- the day after, like before the fight. But, God, it's another weigh-in process. I Now, f- for the UFC, I'm honestly good with it. It's, it is what it is. It's working. And I'm fine with it. But the other orgs, it does concern me. Um, I almost think a same-day weigh-ins for a smaller orgs treated more of an amateur-type approach, but ah, not a good solution for me. I, I'm not real sure on it, to be honest. Okay, moving on to round two. Michael Bisping is cleared to fight. All right. Okay, guys, Michael Bisping revealed a few days ago that he had been given the old clear to train by the doctors. He's targeting a March-April return. Michael said he would accept the challenge from Tim Kennedy, but not before throwing a few cheap shots Kennedy's way. Um, he claimed Kennedy has fought a couple of guys who Michael Bisping has never heard of, you know. He's got wins over some nobodies, and he would prefer to fight somebody in the top five. First off, let's start with Bisping's next opponent, and who would you like to see him face next? Uh, would you like Bisping to face a top five guy, or settle his Twitter war with Tim Kennedy? Let's go with you first, Brian. I'm good with Kennedy. Um, Kennedy looked impressive. The guy he beat was an up-and-comer. And Kennedy's looked impressive. I, th- I think he's earned the right to fight Bisbing. If if Bisbing was fresh, not coming off an injury, I think it would be a better case that Bisbing should be fighting somebody higher. But he is coming off a pretty serious eye injury. And uh, if he wants to call this a t- tune-up fight, so be it. Uh, I'm good with the fight. It's I, li- I like it. Well, the, the fact the top five are all booked kind of makes it uh, a non-question. Obviously, Machida and uh, Jackery are both fighting other opponents, um, and Silva and Weidman are fighting each other, so there's no one else there. So Kennedy makes sense in that respect. Yeah, Kennedy hasn't really beaten anybody ranked at all up till now, but his wins have been quite convincing, so he, he it can be justified and there's a bit of beef there so it adds a bit of extra to it so yeah I, I don't mind the fight I think it's a, it'll be a good fight now Bisping has always had a way with words <laughs> and he's never been one to hold back on the shit talking do you guys think it's time somebody humbled Bisping if so who would you say is the man for the job let's go with you first Brian no it, it's never going to get better than, than Hendo humbling him uh, that's <laughs> that's we don't need better than that. I mean, you have you have your prime one right there. That was brilliant. It's never going to get topped. Uh, and, and Bisbing, for the most part, is selling fights, and he's damn good at it. The, the one real issue I had with Bisbing was the spitting incident. That really, really pissed me off. That was that was so far beyond anything. It's just complete shit. I mean, just complete shit for him to do that crap. And I don't care how he wanted to justify it, how his fans wanted to justify it. So. No, humbling. He's he's got what we would call that UK uh, smug to him, but I, I think he's a classy guy for the most part. Again, minus the spitting incident, and he doesn't need to be humbled. Uh, he's good. For, he's good for the UFC. He's good for UK. Uh, he, I think he reps them well, and uh, he's he's exciting to watch. He's he's evolved as a 
as a fighter, if he can just get a little bit more on his punches to put a little bit more power on him, his wrestling game's come a good way. Um, he's, he's got good boxing, just just needs to sit on the punches a little bit more and get a little bit more power behind him. So, no, no, I, I don't have any animosity towards him anymore. He doesn't need to be humbled. He's he's, he's talking. He's the Chael Sonnen of the UK, I guess. Just not quite as good. Ryan, um, just out of interest, what is UK smoke? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's a smugness uh, and an arrogance that we view it over here. It's I think it's more of a uh, it's more of a culture thing in the U.S. that uh, hell everybody feels we're arrogant. So um, there, there's a there's a U.K. Uh, I used to train with a guy from from Britain, and I've had a, a smugness issue with uh, with British for a while. Just just. They're just English, is the way I look at it. It's not wrong. It's not right. It just, it's different, and it's just a different culture. The way I've looked at it, it's, uh, I don't, man, it's hard to put words to it. It's a whole culture thing now. It's, um, it's not wrong. It's just a different way of looking at it, I guess. It's, yeah, I, I got, I got no way to really explain it. We just kind of view it as, as kind of a smugness, and uh, it's not. Bisbing's per great at talking down to people, but I don't think he does it deliberately. I don't think he's really talking down to him. I think he just he just sells it so well that he sells fights, and that's why people hate him. It, it's the smugness of Bisbing that people just hate, and not all not all British fighters are that way at, at, at all. Uh, he's just the top one, so he's going to get all the the pub for it, and he's going to he's going to kind of hold the the poster of British smugness. Did that make sense at all? <laughs> <laughs> I know what you mean. Well, there's Brian's invitation for episode five, Lost in the Mail. Um, <laughs> 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 We're joking, Brian, not at all. He is a shit talker. Yeah. Right, Greg, what do you make of uh, Michael Bisping's shit talking? Well, does he need humbling? I don't think so. Um, like Brian says, he's been humbled by two guys already. And Henderson and Belfort, but I think Bisping over the last year or so has changed quite a lot. You find a lot of guys are warming to him a lot more now, partly because of the way he is, because of the shit talk and that. But they realise now that it's not all just the uh, arrogance like it, that comes across as. I think it is just a bit of a uh, humorous arrogance. Um, and as for uh, Brian saying it's just a British thing and then he did, did notice he said it's an English thing and it is an English thing Scottish folk aren't like that <laughs> he's full Scottish folk those <laughs> troublemakers those troublemakers the English guys eh? us Scots are just Outside genial our chip shop. kind of people <laughs> <laughs> ok moving on to round 3 TJ Grant still battling concussion uh, another hot topic in the news recently was that former number one contender for the UFC lightweight crown, Mr. TJ Grant, is still suffering from the effects of that concussion that uh, occurred in training um, that pulled him out of his scheduled title fight against Benson Anderson. As things stand right now, TJ Grant is open to be cleared to train sometime near Christmas, uh, but that is far from certain. He suffered a concussion in July, so that's um, a fair few months, that's actually nearly six months. Uh, I wanted to get your take on concussions, guys, and... How many serious concussions can a fighter really take before it's time to walk away healthy? Um, let's start with you first, Brian. Well, concussions, it's such a hot topic now between American football, the military, uh, with the explosions they're facing, and in MMA. It's, I've always felt, it, and again, I'm not a doctor, the first concussion, while bad, it, that that's not the bad one. It, it really, really isn't. Everybody... Anybody that's trained anything has probably gotten a concussion. The issue with sports is the second concussion, the third concussion. Not enough time in between, the healing. It's The brain's incredible. It can really take a lot of damage, but it's got to be given the opportunity to heal. And in the NFL, it's a huge, huge debate over here. These guys get knocked out in a game. They get a concussion. I got, we have Wells Welker for the Broncos. Got concussed last week. And he's probably going to play tonight. That's only seven days coming off a concussion. And hockey, you got Crosby. He missed almost a year and a half because of concussions. They're not healing up in between. 
what I've always liked about MMA is, is technically the UFC, if, if Bisbing gets knocked out, he's not cleared to fight for 30 to 90 days afterwards. But if he's off in the gym sparring the next week, that brain getting pushed back and forth again is, is just bad. He's, they've got to heal up. And that's, that is the issue. If, if you don't stop the, dra- the damage, the trauma to the brain for long enough to allow it to heal up, it, it's the repeated effects that, that really cause the damage. I don't think it's one concussion, it's an issue. But if it, you get a, something slightly afterwards, within an X amount of time, we just don't know what that time is. Is a concussion... If you go three months, no contact, are you good? It, it varies. They, they just don't know yet. And that, that's the problem is if, if Grant got concussed in training and then tried training again the next week, got concussed again a little bit or just didn't feel right, then tried training again the next week, that is the issue. I don't think this is an effect of one concussion for Grant. This is an effect of probably multiple concussions, not waiting long enough, having the, the mentality of, oh, I just rung my bell. I mean, we, we've heard that term, oh, I just rung my bell, I'm fine. No, you fucking got concussion. I mean, your, your brain shifted. It, it's not good. And we just don't know the answers at this point in time. So it, it's a huge, huge deal, especially in, in MMA with the contact. It's, that's what, why the four-ounce gloves are safer to me than the, the boxing gloves, because they allow the brain to shut off quicker. And it, it's, it's an issue. It's a huge, huge, huge issue. And it, it could ruin the NFL. Uh, and it could ruin combat sports in general as 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 we learn more about it. I, I don't know. Uh, Greg, do you agree with Brian? Or do you think there's a set number of concussions a uh, fighter can receive before, you know, it's time to hang up the gloves? Honestly, no clue. Um, I don't know enough about it to be able to make any real judgments on any of it. Um, as far as I'm concerned, the, the, the safest thing they can do is to make sure that these guys are given regular scans, especially ones that have suffered concussion. They should be given regular scans to check that everything is is okay, and that there should be a set thing that they they, they know they can't train, they shouldn't train, they they just should not train. But it's, it's telling somebody they can't train when they feel they are. Even T.J. Grant, his wasn't even a punch that got him. He was rolling doing B.J.J. when he when he got his concussion. It wasn't as if somebody punched him or kicked him or kneed him. It was uh, just an a, some, a, a inconspicuous thing that happened during BJJ. So it's not been anything major, so which kind of goes along with Brian's th- thing that it might have been something underlying in the first place. Uh, do you think this will make Grant more tentative, possibly on his return to action, you know, in training especially? Let's go with you first, uh, Brian. No, not at all. It's not like coming back from a knee where you don't, you know when your knee feels right or you think it feels right, but you're not sure if it's structurally sound or or a joint. Okay, I haven't really pushed it. The brain with concussions either feels right or you don't. So as soon as he feels right to start training, he thinks he's going to be fine. He's not going to know any different. But as soon as he gets hit, he might get nauseous. He might not feel right once he gets hit or something along those lines. So no, uh, he, he's going to be the same guy inside the cage. Just a shot might do more damage than it would have in the past. I mean, it, it could get kind of Chuck Liddell type of thing or uh, Ken Shamrock. I mean, he would get flash knocked out so easily at the end of his career. And I think that just repeated of damage to the brain. It, it, it learns to shut off quicker. So, um, I mean, getting knocked out is a good thing. It, it tells your, It's allowing your body to, to recover. I mean, maybe not a good thing, but it, it's a safety mechanism of of, oh shit, something's wrong, let's reboot. And uh, you only got so many reboots in there, I think. And uh, someone like Ken Shamrock has a real sensitive reboot switch because he was getting flash KO'd very easily at the end. But no, um, I, I think he's think, going to think he's fine. Um, it, it's, they, don't, they have more confidence in their brains. They don't think about that as much, unfortunately, for a lot of these guys. It's like, it's not a knee. It's like, okay. Good. Uh, I'm fine. There's no set number, so no. I, I think he'll be just fine as far as uh, the same type of fighter he was before the concussion issues. Uh, Brian, are you saying Ken Shamrock's got a Windows 95s brain? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes, I do. Uh, maybe, maybe Windows Millennium. It was, it was pretty fucking sensitive. Uh, great, great fighter, but man, he, he, he had a he had a pretty easy reset there at the end. 
I couldn't I couldn't find a reset, but uh, Tito <laughs> found it numerous times. Sensitive. Uh, Greg, do you think um, Grant will be tentative on upon his return? It's similar to Brian, I doubt it. I think uh, fighters aren't generally like that. Um, when they're in the cage, they're not tentative at all. They know what they can. They'll just get back to it. If it was, if it was a like Brian said, a knee or or a, an ankle or something, you can feel the the kind of weakness there. But with the with the brain as well, they, they don't really feel the weakness, so they'll just fight as they would. Well, there's been talk of Grant having to have one more fight before he gets back in the title mix. Uh, anyone in mind who you think he should fight next, uh, Brian? Boy, I'm I'm kind of empty on this. Um, I'm not. He's he's done enough. It seems like multiple times to get the to get the title shot. So uh, for for him, if he can wait and still deserve the the title shot. I think that'd be good for him. Uh, the more, the more time he can get to, to recover, it, I'm good with. I don't know if, if Gilbert has a fight queued up yet. I don't. I don't, does Bindo have a fight queued up? Do any of those guys have a fight queued up right now? Henderson's fighting Josh Thompson next. Okay, and Melendez. Melendez, I don't think has one lined up yet. No. So maybe maybe Grant versus Melendez. Um, if Grant wants the paycheck, I would recommend not fighting. And uh, but that division's kind of tied up right now with Pettis getting surgery. So I, I know it's not a major um, surgery. Then I don't think it's the year type. I think it's six months ish for Pettis. But if he doesn't have to, man, let that brain heal. It's it's a big issue. Uh, Greg, have you got anyone in mind? Do you want uh, TJ Grant's fight? Uh, well, Melendez would be a good option. But uh, I think he probably won't need to fight because we're looking at Pettis being out for six months anyway, so he probably won't need to fight, which kind of gives him a bit of room to sit and let the concussion fully heal as best it can. But there is two other names that, that are available just now. Uh, Rafael Dos Anjos and Khabib Nurmagomedov, who would both be interesting fights for him and both... It would be sense quite quite decent fights as well because these guys are probably one win away from a shot realistically themselves, and if they can beat someone like TJ Grant, it puts them right in a good position as well. And same for Grant if he beats them. I really like Khabib. That's a that's a fucking cracking fight. That. Do you know what yeah. I actually think Grant? Do you know what? That's, that's a tough fight to call that. I think Grant might, Grant might actually lose that fight. That's a that's a fucking tough fight. Yeah. Khabib's been really good recently, so yeah, it's a fight that we'd be we want to watch anyway. Okay, round four. Hendricks blames hand wraps for lack of power against GSP. After a cracking performance uh, against GSP, Hendricks seems to be wasting no time in turning the fans against himself. Uh, start with his pulse fight speech that was met with uh, booze from the crowd. Now Hendricks is citing that he only hit GSP with 70% because his hand wraps were thin and not thick like he usually has them. Uh, if you watched the post fight press conference, Hendricks stated that he only hit GSP 70% because he wanted to pace himself. With this being his like first five round fight, that's clearly a conflicting statement from Hendricks. Uh, let's just put this straight. Are you tired of the excuses from Hendricks, Brian? Yeah, oh yeah. Quickly. Quickly, quickly, quickly. It's it's changed, man, who I want to win the second fight. Uh, I was all for Hendricks winning the first fight, and I thought he did. But I want GSP to finish the guy now. Not that he will. I mean, uh, but I want him to. It's I'm I'm done with Hendricks. I'm tired of it. Uh, it was a close fight, but I was as you guys would say over there, rubbish, complete rubbish. It's uh, I'm tired of it. No, I'm I'm way tired of it. It's excuse after excuse, and and Dana White is a big problem of that. He he's talking out of his ass also, and he's he's not helping the situation. So uh, simple, yeah. Very tired of his excuses. I. Uh, GSP can have his aliens, but that, that has more validity than uh, the Hendrix excuses at this point in time. <laughs> Greg, are you tired of Hendrix excuses? Yeah, the same again. He needs to move on and concentrate on what he's got at hand now, and that's to aim for the rematch and win the next one. He needs to really put this to the back of his mind now and move on. Um, I do agree that Dana has been a big thing. If Dana hadn't came out after the fight and said that it was a disgrace and Hendrix won the fight, I don't think you'd be hearing Johnny going on quite as much as he did. But now he knows that 
he's got the backing of his boss, and his boss thinks he won, he won the fight. But the fact is, it was just a close fight. It, the, yeah, he, the two rounds he won, he probably won a hell of a lot more decisively than GSP. But the other three rounds were George's, <laughs> and it was just a close fight. Um, he needs to just put that to back his mind, move on, and quit talking. Okay, leading into the fight, Hendricks was the power puncher guy, and uh, GSP was the athletic wrestler who could take virtually anyone down at his weight. <laughs> Have you guys changed your opinions on either fighter since the fight, having watched their performance and what has been said since then? Uh, score with you first, Brian. Yeah, my, my opinion has changed on who I want to win versus who I think will win. I still see I still see Hendricks winning the next fight, but I'll be pulling for GSP this time. Um, so that that part has changed. The outcome of the fight I think is going to be the same with Hendricks just being a little bit more dominating in all five rounds this time. Um, but I'll be pulling for GSP. I really, really will. So it's it's changed. It just I I don't see the outcome being too much different. Just a little bit more um, decisive for Hendricks. Well, the thing about GSP, he's going to literally, you know, it was clear that he had things on his mind going into the fight. So, the second fight, he could literally, you know, be a different fighter. So, I thought Hendrix, you know, what's changed for me with Hendrix, I actually think he's a fucking stronger than what I thought he was. You know, did you see him in round one? He actually lifted GSP off his feet. He reversed GSP back into the cage and he lifted him up in the air. Yeah. That was amazing. So, what I learned from it is Hendrix is a tougher wrestler. But also, I learned, um, obviously, my first thought was GSP. Maybe he should retire. But now I'm, you know, I'm back to my old thoughts with GSP. I still think he's that dominant wrestler. I still think he's athletic. And I still think he can beat anyone in his division. All barring um, personal problems. So, Greg, uh, what, have you changed your opinions on either fighter since uh, watching the fight? Well, GSP, not at all, really. Um, he's exactly what he always has been, really. But Hendricks surprised me that he was able to go five rounds and look pretty much fresh the whole way through. I, ex- I totally expected him to start losing a bit of heat and his punches, uh, his slow down on his uh, uh, cardio all the, from halfway through the third round to the end of the fight. And then in the third, it looked like he maybe was. But then he, he looked uh, perfectly fine for the rest of the fight. Um, as for if there's a rematch, I... I don't think there's going to be a rematch. I, I think GSP will call it a day. But if there was a rematch, I don't see any reason that GSP would lose it again. I think GSP would now know what he's got to do to win it. And he will. Well, like we mentioned, we've been hearing the excuses from Hendrix. Um, do you think this is the last of the excuses from Hendrix? Or do you think there's more to come, Brian? Uh, I think there's more to come. Uh, he's shown zero signs of accepting it, in my opinion. There used to be a guy, uh, Arona, I think, uh, fought in Pride, fought, fought Fedor back in rings, I believe, and boy, he had some of the greatest excuses. Um, and I, 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 the sunburn from the filming was an issue. His hands, his knuckles, his calluses on his knuckles got sunburnt and lost, lost the cushioning there. It wasn't the hand wraps or uh, the aliens helped GSP, and they fucking had some sort of force field around GSP. <laughs> Man, I don't know. They're the, they're all sounding pretty silly at this point. It's 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 a term that I've tried to use more and more, and that's called owning it, owning your actions. And he's not. He's not owning his actions. So, uh, yeah, there's going to be something. Um, I don't know what it was. Uh, uh, I think the forest field from the aliens is probably the best. So we'll, we'll, I'll hope for that one. It was undercover alien judges, Brian. I think that's what it was. There we go. That's it. <laughs> let's, let's start the rumors now. Every we can't rumor be our, someplace. We can't be having our Pluto champion losing to Hendrix. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Greg, do you think there's more to come from Hendrix with um, the excuses? Um, excuses, maybe not so much excuses, but he's never really thrown his ire towards the judges yet for what happened in the last fight. So something's going to come along. And which so he can have a go at the judges soon enough, I think, and, and probably at the scoring system, which I'd quite like him to call the scoring system out because that's what the real issue here is. I don't think he needs to. Fucking everyone else has. <laughs> yeah. Okay, moving on to our fifth and final round. Chel Sonnen says Anthony Pettis would smash DSP. 
Okay, mouthpiece, as the media likes to describe him, Mr. Chael P. Sonnen, made a tweet recently, uh, claiming UFC lightweight champion Anthony Pettis would smash GSP, period. Uh, seems more shit-talking from Chael. Is it starting to get a little boring for you? And do you even know why he's saying this? It's not like Pettis is moving up to welterweight anytime soon. Uh, starting with you first, Brian. Uh, that was my thought. Is what's the purpose of this tweet? I I, I don't get it. I don't I, I don't understand it. Pettis is hurt. Uh, Shale doesn't have any real interest in either, either one of them. Pettis has plenty of fights lined up at, at lightweight. Uh, GSP is good at welterweight. What? Why? This is it's 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 a stupid tweet. And uh, no, there's there's. And plus, I disagree with it on top of that. I love Pettis. I really love me some Pettis. But no, it, it's a stupid tweet, and we'll, we'll go into the details more later. It's didn't like it. Uh, Greg, are you getting a little tired of Chell Sonnen? Uh, did you see any sense in Chell making that tweet? I'll never get tired of Chell Sonnen. Simple as that. <laughs> but I think I think uh, there's something missing here uh, that you guys have not been overlooked. I think it's a fun tweet. Uh, this is about the cover vote for the the video game. Chael Sonnen, if he wins his semi-final uh, matchup against uh, Gustafsson, then goes against the winner of Pettis and GSP. Now, if G- Pettis beats GSP, there's a far bigger chance of Sonnen getting that cover than if GSP wins it, because GSP's going to get more mm-hmm. votes. So I think this is all just Sonnen trying to sway fans to vote for Pettis in the vote and then he gets Pettis in the final to get the cover. So it's nothing to do with fighting, it's just him trying to sway fans to vote for Pettis. So what you're telling us is the best shit talker gets on the cover of the new video game. That's exactly what he's aiming for here. Well, we know fucking Charles Sonnen's on then, don't we? Fuck me. Is Bisping in that competition? Yeah, he beat Bisping in the last round. Fucking no, but that was a fucking tight affair. <laughs> it was Bisbing, it's, there was a, a numbers came out during the week and Bisbing was ahead of him midweek. Shit. Sonnen came ended up topping it but that that's what the whole tweet's about it's not a hey, serious tweet I don't think Sonnen went into his bag of tricks then when he saw that didn't he hey, that's what yeah. I talk about oh yeah hey. okay that's a wrap for today's show as always thank you for watching if you would like to follow MMA Crypt the details will appear on the screen in just a moment from MMA Crypt's Fighting Talk take care and goodbye <laughs>